I am Sarah Eckhart. I'm the Travis County Judge. I also want to welcome, uh, we have the Cedar Park Mayor, Mayor Van Arsdale here. We have the Round Rock Mayor, Craig Morgan, the Austin Mayor, Steve Adler, uh, the Will, uh, Williamson County Sheriff, Chody, Williamson County Commissioner Bowles, Williamson County Judge Gravel. We also have Dr. Palazzo, who's the public health uh, doc for Williamson County, as well as Dr. Escott, who's the public health doc for Travis County in the city of Austin. It's great to have this incredible regional unity here today on uh, uh, to face together uh, the challenge of COVID-19. Um, our best enforcement in this challenge is our responsibility to each other. And this um, gathering of leaders um, from across Central Texas shows an incredible sense of responsibility to one another. COVID-19 depends on us to pass it from person to person. We have a small window of opportunity in which to flatten the spike of infection uh, by taking aggressive steps right now. So over the next days and weeks, I am calling upon our community to be strong, to be unified in maintaining social distancing. We will find new ways to work, play, and worship together. We will find ways to stay connected while preventing the spread of COVID-19 in our community through social distancing. So today I have signed an order to stay home and work safe. The details of that order will be coming out uh, um, over the course of the next hours so that people will be able to take a look at the order themselves and understand what it means for them. But at the end of the day, what it means is that we're asking our community to stay home to the greatest extent possible. We've identified specific industries uh, and ways those industries could stay operating because they are essential. But if it is not an essential activity or an essential business, we're asking folks to stay home and to stay safe. So with that, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Escott to come up and brief us on uh, the facts underlying this order and why we've gone to this aggressive but necessary action so that folks can stay home and stay safe. Dr. Escott. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Mark Escott. I am the interim health authority for the city of Austin and Travis County. As of today, our jurisdiction has 86 confirmed cases. However, due to modeling that we've seen, we certainly suspect even at this stage, we have many more than that. Uh, we know that we're challenged by testing. We know that we're challenged by uh, getting folks through and getting results in a timely fashion. But what concerns us the most right now is the modeling that we've seen with our partners at the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, that modeling suggests that in the short term, in the next three to four weeks, our hospitals could reach capacity. That modeling suggests to us that if we put schools back in session, if we turn the businesses back on, if we allow people to go back to restaurants and bars and businesses today, that by May, we will need to be able to provide more than 20,000 hospital beds a day for our community alone. And I bring this up because we have to forecast a little bit. The lessons learned have been loud and clear from China, from Italy, from Seattle, from Washington, from New York. We cannot wait until the hospitals are already overrun to make decisions and act decisively to prevent this spread. Now, we've made difficult decisions before. Closing South by Southwest, the Spring Festival, closing restaurants, dining rooms, and bars, and businesses. But these decisions are not as difficult as the ones that we really want to prevent from having to make. Those decisions are, which member of our healthcare community gets personal protective equipment? Who gets masks? Do we give it to first responders? Do we give it to hospitals? Do we give it to nursing homes? Other decisions that are even more difficult when we have scarce resources, if we were to run out of ventilators and ICU beds, we have to make difficult decisions about who gets the ventilator or not, who gets the opportunity to survive or not. These are decisions that are already being faced 
across the globe by communities who are already, already at war with this virus, and one that we can prevent or at the very least delay substantially until we can be more prepared to fight that battle here. Today in the city of Austin and Travis County, we have enough hospital beds, we have enough ICU beds, we have enough ventilators to get us through the next three to four weeks. But if we don't take action today, we are gonna run out and we're gonna run out soon. It's important for us to also remember that when our friends and our colleagues and our families are already at war in California, in New York, in Washington State, we should be at war also. We need to have that war mentality. We must band together right now to ensure that we are strengthening our defenses and that any excess that we have, we are sharing with those communities who are already in battle. We can't take chances right now, not when we are still identifying additional bed capacity, additional ventilator capacity, when we are still in the process of ramping up testing, when we are still trying to identify personal protective equipment that our health care providers and our first responders need to protect themselves and their families from this virus. I will not ask them to sacrifice themselves because we fail to act. We are acting today. And for these reasons, I recommended to the mayor and the judge that we transition to the stay home order effective immediately. Now, over the coming days, the University of Texas uh, is going to share some of the modeling information that we have seen. And you're going to see some numbers about social distancing. Right now, we believe before today that we've been at 50% social distancing through the actions that we've already taken. That has bought us valuable time, and we acted early. Now we're hoping that this action will get us at least to 75%. But I want to be very clear with the members of this community. We need to be at 90%. And that takes you. That takes all of you making individual decisions to stay home, to work from home, and to only go out if you need essential things. If you don't need essential things, you need to stay home, you need to be with your family, you need to connect with the world virtually. Further, I've recommended to school districts, private and public schools, that they remain closed for the remainder of the semester. The modeling that I mentioned, the modeling that will be shared in the next two days, indicates very clearly that that is a basic and necessary step to substantially mitigate this threat. If we don't do that, we will not be effective at preventing uh, uh, undue death and surge in our health care system. Now, it's important to recognize that some good decisions have been made along the way. And I want to recognize President Trump for his early and decisive action to restrict China travel. But we will not be judged on our early actions in this outbreak, in this crisis, in this war. We will be judged on the totality of our decisions. And therefore, we have to continue to use science and medicine to help guide and inform those decisions. It's critical right now that we stop acting independently as cities and as states. It's critical that we stop acting right now as Republicans and Democrats. To be successful as a nation in battling this war, we have to do it as one country. We have to continue to make decisions and take decisive actions now that will strengthen those defenses. We have to ensure that those of us who are battling smaller battles at this stage shore up those defenses so that we can reinforce those who are already at war. We have to continue to choose strength over fear in the face of adversity. But to do this, we have to do it not as individual cities and states, but as one United States. Together, we can save thousands of lives in America. We can save thousands of lives right here in our community. But to do this is dependent upon the whole community. That's staying home. That's using good hygiene. That's supporting those that still have to work, our first responders, our health care workers, our sanitation employees. Those essential employees are going to be hit hard. They're going to have to work hard to support the rest of this community. It's up to our entire community to support them. I'll now ask Dr. Lori Palazzo, who is the Health Authority for Williamson County, 
to come to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Escott. Um, I can't emphasize enough what Dr. Escott just said. We do have to work together. This is important for us to do this and to make this move, that we all do stay home and stay safe. As you may know, eight of the 10 deaths in the United States have been in persons over the age of 65. In Williamson County, we have 74,000 residents who fit into this category. Our goal is to protect all our residents, but especially this vulnerable population. That's why we've sent out control orders with strict infection control for all the nursing homes, assisted living facilities, retirement communities. And that's why I stand behind this decision to go even further with stay home, stay safe, to protect everybody, but especially our vulnerable citizens. Thank you very much for helping us, and please let's all work together in a united front to keep everyone safe. And now, Judge Gravel from Williamson County will come speak. Good afternoon. I am Bill Gravel, the Williamson County Judge, and I want to say first thank you to those that are a part of the Central Texas community and the region and the collaborative effort that we've used in working together. I especially want to say thank you to Judge Eckhart in Travis County and how we've been able to partner together because we have cities that cross county boundaries. I want to say thank you to Mayor Atler because we have Austin in Williamson County and Travis County. I want to say thank you to Mayor Morgan in Round Rock who is in the same situation as well as Mayor Van Arsdale from Cedar Park. What we're talking about today is not just a county approach, but a regional approach to fighting something that we're facing. The coronavirus knows no boundaries. It knows not Williamson County or Travis County. It knows no boundary of white or black or young or old. This virus knows no boundaries. So we must, as a community, come together and work together collaboratively. I've signed an order uh, effective at midnight tonight for Williamson County to stay home and stay safe. During the stay home, stay safe order, you can check that out at your Travis County website or your wilco.org website and find those particulars that would pertain to you. What we're really asking for Central Texas to do is to come together and work as a region to care for those that are around us. Let's use technology in the next many weeks to communicate with our friends and to check on those. The greatest concern that I have as county judge and as a leader in Central Texas is for our individuals in our community that are alone or perhaps they are afraid. Use this time to check on the seniors and the young and those that are alone near you. Use the technologies that we have uh, to connect with each other. This is a time where the region comes together to be creative and innovative. And I want to say to the governor of the state of Texas, I respect you and I trust the decisions that you're making for our Texas. I understand that you haven't issued a statewide order and I completely understand what you're doing. I know that you're responsible for 254 counties and we're only responsible for two. We respect your decision, we need your support, and we need your help today and in the days ahead. I'm proud to introduce to you a man who I think has been a stalwart during this time, uh, the mayor of the city of Austin, yeah. Mayor Steve Adler. So we've got this. We have the, the, the ability to, to, to control what it is that happens in our, in our community. So this virus has come. It is a big deal. Uh, it's becoming more and more apparent all the time. But let me lead with just a, a, a thought of, of, and a measure of, of hope, uh, which, which I think we can all embrace. If we all do what we can, to help keep 
our neighbors safe and ourselves safe, then we're going to be able to weather this virus coming into our community uh, in, in, in the best way possible. Uh, if we don't, though, uh, the, the, the biggest challenge, the biggest risk we face is that we just don't take this as, as seriously as we, as we need to, that, that we don't do the things that we can do right now. Uh, we don't take advantage of this real window of opportunity that is before us. If, if, we, don't, if we don't grasp it and take advantage of, of, of this opportunity that we have, uh, then, then we're going to get pretty much overwhelmed by, by the virus, uh, and, and we won't be in a good place. But we get to control that. We get to decide, both individually and collectively, uh, what's going to be happening in our community uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, this is the, the challenge, uh, and this is what we all need to do, and if you heard uh, Dr. Escott talk uh, earlier, it's pretty clear. We have to decrease the number of, of physical interactions that we're having by 90 percent, by 90 percent. That's a really big number. It's going to be pretty disruptive uh, to, to people's lives. It's a real change in the way that we've been going about living uh, until this very moment. But for at least some period of time, the challenge before us is, can we decrease those direct interactions by 90 percent, because if we can individually, if we can collectively, then we're going to be able to, to, to weather this. We'll be able to make sure that, that everybody who wants testing has the opportunity to be able to get testing. We can get down to, to, to 90 percent uh, reduction in interactions then all of our first responders and healthcare workers will have all the, the, the personal protection equipment that they need. Uh, ultimately, we'll have all the ventilators uh, that we need in, in the city. We get to decide that question, and, and what makes this difficult is we have to decide this question now before we actually see what it looks like when a lot of people in this city are, are catching this virus. And a lot of people are going to get it. It's, it's a virus like the flu. It's going to pass through. What we're trying to ensure is, is that everybody doesn't get it. Everybody doesn't get it at once. So what's the best way to do that? It's to stay home and to work safe. And that's the orders that we're entering here today. The best way to be able to achieve that 90% reduction is for everybody to stay home. And to the degree that you can, everybody should be staying home. Now, the orders that we have have exceptions. Uh, obviously, there's some people that are going to have to go to work because their job or their function is really essential or critical for the, for the city and the county and the community to, to be able to, 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 to move forward. Uh, but everything that's not essential and, and, and critical, we're going to put aside for right now to help as many people stay as home as much as they can, they can be home. It's okay to go outside. In fact, it's probably encouraged to go outside so you don't get stir crazy in the house. Go out to, to walk or to, or to jog. But when you do that, don't do it in, don't do it in groups. Again, reduce by 90% the, 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 the direct interactions that you're having with people. You can still go out to shop to the grocery store, to the pharmacy, uh, to get supplies. That's okay, too. When you do go shop, go out and shop alone. Don't bring the whole family with you. Decrease those, those, those interactions. Uh, make sure that when you do go out, that first, don't go out if you're not, if you're not feeling well, don't go out at all. Uh, but if you, if you are feeling well and you go out to shop at the grocery store, make sure that you're staying six feet apart uh, from, from everybody that, that you would be interacting with. You know, I am really proud of our region uh, acting the way that it is, has. Greatly appreciate the, the leadership of the, of the county judge and the opportunity and the cooperation that the city uh, has had working with Travis County. 
Our staffs are working with one another. We've been working together thus far with all the orders that have come out. We'll continue to do so. Uh, wider than just Travis County with Williamson County, it's great to see some of my colleague mayors here uh, and others that would be here if we weren't practicing social distancing and, 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 and trying to keep some people uh, uh, at home. Uh, but it's not just us. This same thing, virtually the same kind of orders, uh, the, the stay home and work safe uh, orders are now being put into effect in Houston and Harris County and, and, and Bear County and San Antonio and Dallas and Dallas County and Fort Worth. Uh, we see this now happening in the big metropolitan areas and the big counties around the state because it's going to take all of us, all of us doing this together uh, for it to be able to work. Now, we have pulled together before. We did it with the bombing. We did it with the, with the water boil. Uh, you know, I, it's one of the things that I love about this place. This one's a little bit bigger. It's going to be a little bit more sustained. But we know what's necessary. We know, we know how good it feels to actually be able to, to do everything we can to help ensure that our neighbors are, are safe. Uh, I, this is my request for everybody. This is an order that's going to go into effect midnight tonight to give everybody the chance to kind of get ready for it, to close down their, their non-essential and critical businesses. Tomorrow we start this in earnest, although everybody that could start it today, please go ahead and do that. But this is what I want. When you go to sleep at night, I want you to count the number of people that you have interacted with over the course of the day. Think through the day, count the number of people and see if you are successfully decreasing by 90% the number of, of direct uh, physical uh, interactions that you're having with people. Uh, we have to keep track of that number. Everybody needs to do their part in this if we're going to be successful as a community. If we do this, we're going to be able to, to get through this in, 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 in a good place. But it's going to take all of us pulling together. We can do this. Thank you. Judge. So as you can see, although we are practicing social distancing, we are not alone in this. We have a robust local strategy and we're deploying it so that we can stay home, work safe, and stay home, work safe is the best way in this moment to lessen both the health and the economic impacts of COVID-19. So I just want to say thank you to all the local heroes who are meeting this challenge with all their talents, their resources, and their ingenuity. We are all in this together. So with that, I'd like to kick it over to questions. Okay, okay Judge, the number of questions here. The first question is from Fox 7. Uh, I believe this will probably be for Dr. Escott. Uh, we know the number of confirmed cases are at 86. Do you have an estimate of how many others may be infected? Dr. Escott? So that's an excellent question. And the challenge is we don't know which factor to apply to that. Uh, we'll generally apply a factor of 7 to 10, which is what we're using to predict our capacity in three weeks' time. Uh, so we applied a factor of, of 7. Uh, to assume that there are seven times the number of, of uh, actual cases as the ones that we know about. And this next question is from the Austin American Statesman. Will there be further limitations placed on outdoor spaces, such as the Green Belt, Zilker Park, Lady Bird Lake, and is there discussion about a full closure of those spaces? Uh, I think as the mayor and judge said, we're asking people to honor the spirit of, of these orders, and that is we really must decrease the, the personal interactions, the social distancing, by 90 percent. Um, you know, the green belts are a big space. People can space out. We're asking people to be cognizant that, that, that any time two people get together, face to face in particular, there's a risk of transmission. There's going to be continued transmission to some extent, even under these orders. But what we're trying to manage is the unbridled growth of, of spread across this community. So if we practice these social distancing uh, techniques, if we can really work hard together as a community to, uh, to reach that 90% together, we won't have to order anything further. And we are looking at ways uh, to actually calculate 
how, we are, how successful we are at social distancing. Some of that will be evident by the number of cases and, and whether they continue to grow or we start to see it trail off. Um, but we are looking at ways to, to calculate that so we can tell if we need to increase restrictions or potentially at some stage loosen those restrictions. Uh, this next question is from uh, KVU and a statesman. To what extent will criminal penalties be enforced when it comes to uh, this sort of issue? Um, really, what we're looking at, uh, the, the best enforcement is our responsibility to one another. Um, we do expect, uh, as we've seen in the past, that this community comes together and that any kind of criminal enforcement um, is really not needed. We will first seek to inform, second, uh, actually primarily seek to assist and to inform. Um, enforcement is, is the last option and only if we see um, something really egregious. Uh, but there are provisions in these orders for, for uh, law enforcement to assist us, absolutely. Uh, while I have you up there, Judge, an another question from the statesman was any further sort of escalating uh, of this, or is this sort of the highest thing we could do? Is there sort of a full lockdown or further restrictions or something on the table? Would there, anything, would there be anything that would lead to more As Dr. Like Escott this? mentioned, uh, we are hoping that this is uh, what is needed because we will achieve a 90% a compliance uh, in order to, to reduce circulation of individuals and, there, and thereby reduce the circulation of COVID-19 in our community. We are really relying on our local heroes to uh, reduce those social interactions, to keep that social distancing up, and to do all the things that are detailed in what will be known as Exhibit B of these orders with regard to our uh, health department's uh, guidelines and requirements in order to uh, reduce the spread of this disease. Yeah. CBS Austin has a question. Uh, did something change in health uh, sort of updates that sort of prompted order? I know this w was discussed, but if you could sort of elaborate on sort of um, you know, moving from sort of bars and restaurants and gatherings to doing this sort of full uh, sort of uh, stay-at-home order. This has been a, uh, a swift moving unfolding pandemic internationally, nationally, and locally. Um, our local response has been aggressive. Um, what is, is changing, I believe, is a recognition, and I think you uh, see it in the number of elected, local elected officials that are here, as well as the number of orders you see coming out from Harris County, Tarrant County, Dallas County, Bear County, McClendon County, Hayes County, Bell County. Um, you are seeing a very aggressive local response um, out of a concern for the numbers that we're seeing. Going down the list here, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of how confident in terms of the compliance with these measures are you that people in you know Travis and Williamson County, City of Austin, and regionally will will comply with this? Well, as you've heard, we've probably achieved about a 50, uh, 50 percentage. Uh, um, uh, reduction in social interaction. We're going for a 90% reduction, and that's what this order is about. That question is from the Chronicle. Next question is from Hill Country News. Do we, and it's a question about both uh, tests administered in hospital beds in both Travis and Williamson County. How many tests have been Im administered in both counties, and how many hospital beds do we have in both let's, counties? Let's bring up Dr. Escott for that. Uh, he has a, a, a really wonderful grasp of this with a series of task forces with expertise uh, in our region addressing these issues. Uh, so we are working with our healthcare administrators from our, our big three networks, uh, Baylor Scott and White, St. David's and Ascension Seton, uh, to identify both what our current capacity is as well as what our surge capacity can be with extra beds and vents and, and, and isolation rooms. Uh, so we're in, still in the process of, of uh, developing those numbers and identifying additional sites where we could care for people uh, that may not be located in a hospital. Um, we are uh, working on releasing a dashboard 
later today or tomorrow, which will give a, a status update for Travis County in relation to number of cases, some demographic information about cases, so that we can provide additional details. Uh, you, you know, we have increased our testing substantially over the past week. Uh, we need to increase it substantially more. Uh, again, we are limited right now by the, uh, primarily right now by the, the swabs themselves and the, what we call the transport media that they go in, uh, which are necessary to, to submit those tests. We have seen a, uh, uh, approval of a rapid test over the weekend by the FTA uh, with the emergency use authorization which will give us a, what we call a point of care testing uh, available pr primarily right now in hospitals or soon in hospitals, uh, but could be generalized to other clinical settings and outpatient settings, which could give a result in 45 minutes. And in, in terms of sort of, and I'll go ahead and ask a question on behalf of KUT here. Um, in terms of hospitals right now, are you seeing an increase in the number of reported symptoms reported to hospitals at this point that may or may not be reflected uh, and the number of confirmed cases that are released? Uh, actually, right now, we've got 13 people in our jurisdiction uh, who are confirmed and, and hospitalized. Um, so that number is, is relatively low. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that the hospital volumes, the ER volumes right now seem to be holding steady or, or slightly lower than usual. Uh, these are re reassuring signs to us. Uh, some of this has to do with, with people heeding the warning of not only going to the hospital if you really need to go to the hospital. Uh, but it's also uh, uh, partially related to cancellation of elective procedures, which increases capacity. Um, you know, we, we expect that, that there will be an increase in numbers, that we will still continue to see increases in cases and increases in hospitalizations. But by taking this action now, we're hopeful that we will never, at least in the short term, uh, uh, hit beyond capacity where we can't effectively take care of people in the traditional setting. I'm going to ask Dr. Palazzo to step up to, to talk about Williamson County. Thank you, Dr. Escott. Williamson County is basically has the same uh, similar numbers. We're a little bit less than Travis. Out of our 19 cases as of this morning, we only have two hospitalized cases. The hospitals uh, in Williamson County are doing very well right now. We, we're not, um, they're not being overwhelmed. We're keeping daily tabs on the open beds and on the availability of ventilators. And we have a special task force working on that. As far as testing, just like Dr. Escott said, we're working on getting accurate numbers on those numbers that the testing that have been done and the testing results themselves. And we're very excited about this at-home test that was just approved. So again, as testing capability increases, our cases will go up. Another good reason for us to have this order in place to all work together to keep that 90% Per, uh, percentage that we're talking about of less interaction and to keep our cases down. We had a couple of questions uh, from both Community Impact and the Austin Business Journal related to construction projects in the area. Community Impact's question was about some of the bigger projects such as the MLS Stadium, uh, projects up in Round Rock and some of the uh, towers in downtown. And also uh, the Business Journal's question considered some Construction is considered critical infrastructure to continue. Uh, how should developers and builders interpret these orders uh, if they're doing smaller office, multifamily, or single family development? Uh, without singling out a specific industry, what we're saying in this order is if your business is not essential to health and safety during this time of COVID 19, we are asking you to cease operation to the extent that you can't operate at home or underneath our minimum basic operations requirement in the order itself. So I uh, will not speak about specific industries uh, except to say if it's not essential for health and safety, we are asking you to stop operations for a period of time. It's absolutely essential that we get to a 90% reduction in human interaction. So if it is not essential activity or essential business, we're asking you to uh, go to minimum standards of operation 
which would include working from home to the greatest extent possible. Judge, well, I have you to um, ask a, a question about sort of uh, if we're doing this sort of regionally uh, between these between these counties, uh, do you feel that some sort of more statewide order should be issued regionally? Uh, I believe you mentioned yesterday evening sort of an MSA order if, if, if the governor chooses not to do the whole state. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that and how that would impact compliance? We, of course, need a statewide strategy. We need a national strategy. Uh, we at the local level are providing a local strategy with aggressive action in order to reduce by 90 percent our social interactions. Um, uh, of course, we will continue to advocate for uh, a unified state and national action, absolutely. Um, but I am so buoyed by the, the unified uh, and swift action of my fellow local leaders. Uh, and we will continue to work with our um, uh, major metros across the state as well as the surrounding counties to have a unified response. And in terms of you mentioning unified response, uh, how similar are these orders identical across the jurisdictions or are there, are there subtle differences? Or Of course there are differences and that I believe is um, it's possibly the strength and the, uh, the weakness of not having a, a unified state or federal strategy. Um, the, um, there will be differences from order to order and from community to community. We will stay engaged as we all already are. We have multiple text strings going right now uh, among the mayors. Uh, Mayor Adler has been spearheading a text, text string with all of the major metro mayors. I have been on a text string with all of the major uh, metro county judges, as well as on a continual communication link with my central Texas uh, county judges and mayors um, uh, in our five county MSA. So we're trying to get to uh, the closest thing to uh, mirrored orders as we can, uh, given the, the difficulty um, of having multiple jurisdictions. I think that would be great. Uh, Judge Gravel, he can speak to um, what we have been doing to be unified. I want to first say thank you to all of the different media outlets and the platforms that you're using to help us tell the good story. I even know for some of you that are in the media outlets, this can be a turbulent time for you or a chaotic time for you. But I want to say this, whether you're the Hill Country News or Community Impact or the Austin American Statesman or CBS Fox or whatever network, you need to know that there's never been a more vital time for your service than now. And on behalf of all of the electeds, we want to say thank you for that. In the next few hours from the two county judges, you'll see orders through our county websites, and we would appreciate it if you would pick those orders up and recirculate those that are out there. We're working very hard to, to walk in unison, and I have to tell you that I have more confidence today than I did a week ago because of the people that stand behind me and the people that stand with me. The one thing that I have discovered in the last week is that Central Texas is amazing. And the best people to make the decisions for Central Texas are the people that are in this room. I would also encourage our neighboring county judges that are struggling with potential orders. Those will be made available on our website. And if you choose to join or partner in with us, we will stand together, arm in arm, from a distance, to protect Central Texas. Thank you. 